Hi, in this video we will be uh, looking at the various features of Dungeon Architect and we'll also uh, design the look and feel of the dungeon by creating a theme file. So I have a new level here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and drop in a dungeon actor. So I go to the modes panel and search for dungeon and place that onto the scene and reset its transform. Alright, now if I go and <coughs> if I try to build this dungeon, uh, it says that dungeon theme uh, is not assigned. So I'm going to go ahead and assign a new theme. And right now there's just one theme. So if I select this and click build, uh, our dungeon would be created with uh, based on whatever was defined in that theme file. Let's just drop in a skylight as well. Alright. Uh, so let's have a look at how the theme file looks like. So I'm going to select the dungeon again and uh, see what the theme is. Uh, so this is the uh, the dungeon theme editor. Uh, th a theme basically defines, uh, tells or instructs the plugin on how the uh, the meshes are to be laid out along the layout of the dungeon. So uh, let me show you the documentation. If I go to the user guide, you would see that there is a right. So when the dungeon is generated, the layout of the dungeon is generated. Uh, uh, the plugin it emits various invisible points called markers. It em emits these markers all over the map. So these markers are invisible and they're just named points. So I have. Uh, these wall markers around the uh, edge of the uh, edge of the room and I have ground markers and I have one door marker so this is all in memory and when the layout is generated all it does is it generates a layout and it creates uh, a bunch of these markers or points in space and uh, and then that is when your theme file comes in in the next step uh, these invisible points are then replaced with the meshes that you define in your theme file. So in my theme file I have said that uh, in my theme file I say that alright if wherever there is a ground marker go ahead and replace it with this ground mesh. So it's going to take this ground mesh and place it wherever there is a ground marker. And likewise if there is uh, wherever there is a wall marker it's going to take that and replace it with whatever I have defined here. And same way for doors and everything else. So this is how uh, this is how it the plugin lets the user design or define how the the layout of the dungeon looks like. So if I open up the uh, if I open up the theme editor, this is where I design the uh, the graph. And here I have a 3D viewport that shows me an interactive uh, preview of how the theme looks like. So I can go ahead and modify the values here. If I, for example, break this link to the ground node, then the ground meshes are not inserted. I can change this to something else as well. So let's close this off uh, and let's save this. Now let's go ahead and create our own theme. I'm going to change this to uh, go to miscellaneous and uh, dungeon let's call it the simple theme and choose the simple theme now if I open this simple theme there's nothing really in it it's all empty that's why the preview is also empty so I'm going to select this uh, theme as uh, the default for this dungeon and when I click build you don't see anything because we haven't defined any meshes so let's go ahead and define our meshes so let's start with the ground mesh I'm gonna drag a link out of the ground node and choose a mesh node so a mesh node lets me insert a mesh wherever there's a this type of marker so I can have a ground mesh or I can have even an actor node where I could insert a blueprint for example in, in a door I might have an interactive door blueprint and I can just select the actor node. So for now we are going to go to the ground node and insert a mesh node. And let's go ahead here and select the mesh. Uh, let's see. If we go to the starter content, 
meshes I have uh, at floor zero one. Let's select that. Now, as soon as I select this, you see that the uh, uh, the viewport has been updated. So this gives you uh, 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 this lets you interactively design your dungeons, and uh, it reduces the time of going and rebuilding it uh, in the main viewport. You can see it right here. Let's go ahead and create one more. Let's create the wall. So uh, a dungeon consists of a bunch of rooms and these rooms are connected together through corridors. Uh, uh, so the, the rooms are surrounded by walls and everything in between is uh, the, the boundaries in between have fence. So a fence is anything that's outside the room uh, and walls are within the room, room boundaries. So let's create a mesh for the walls. Let's select this. And when I do that, I have uh, I have now assigned walls to the uh, to the room. So let's go ahead and create a let's add fence as well. Right now, before that, you can go ahead and modify the properties of the preview dungeon that you see here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this, and I can change the seed if I don't like what I see. I can change it something else. So seed defines a uh, seed completely changes the layout of your dungeon to something else. So let's go ahead and create the fence. Uh, I want a mesh node, and I have uh, I have this. So let's add this. So this has been added. So these are just placeholders for for holding the glass uh, on the fence. So uh, another feature of this is that you can have multiple meshes attached to the same marker. So I I want a glass slab as well as this holder to be attached to the same same fence. So I'm just going to drag out another mesh node and uh, place in the glass slab. Right now, the now you see only one of them showing up. Right, if I break this link, for example, now I see the glass slab. But if I put it back in, I see that only this is shown. The reason is that uh, there is a flag here that says consume and attach. If this is checked, then the the nodes that are after this would not be inserted into the scene. So this is very useful later on. I will show you the use cases for that. Uh, but for now, since I want both of them, I'm I don't want uh, I don't want the execution to stop when this node is executed, so that the plugin also goes and inserts this as well. So I'm going to select this and uncheck consume and attach. So now you see that um, the glass slab has, is also included here. Uh, I'm also going to uncheck here. Right. So uh, now let's raise the glass slab a little it up so you can do that by selecting this and expand offset and let's bring it up by 50 let's bring it up by 40 25 now let's go ahead and add a add stairs I have a stair mesh as well Now the stay mesh needs to be rotated by 90 degrees. Right, so let's select this and rotate along C by 90, uh, by minus 90, and let's move this back a bit along X with the uh, minus 100, 200, minus 150. Okay, that's good. Uh, likewise, let's also add the stay to X. So this is a stay of uh, twice the height. I have a mesh for that as well.
all right so now let's go ahead to the main uh, viewport and click build and we could build our uh, dungeon but now you see that the uh, this needs to be rotated as well the this mesh so let's put in 90 here minus 20 save this and rebuild and it's building fine so now you see that there is a lot of gap here between the uh, uh, the fence so we're going to fix that so I want this to uh, to be added twice uh, I'm going to add this mesh twice within the same slab. I'm going to offset this by minus uh, 100 here and I'll offset another set by 100 here. So let's copy these two nodes and paste them here. And uh, let me offset this by minus 100. So it moves to a bit over there. Even this by minus 100. Now let's go ahead and add these as well. So now we're adding four, uh, uh, two sets of these. And now we need to offset this by 100 here. So let's change the 100, change this to 100. And it looks much better now. Uh, we could scale this slightly because they are uh, uh, they're colliding with each other. So I'm going to select the glass slab and uh, set the scale of x to 0.9. So it becomes a little smaller, maybe 0.95. And select the other one as well. And change its scale to 0 0.95. Okay, now we have a gap uh, in this area. Let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, so we have something called a, uh, a wall half separator. So whenever there is an elevation here, you have half the wall size. So you can fill that up by uh, assigning a mesh here. And I have a mesh for this as well. Let me see it fills it up. and I need to offset this a bit so let me no I think I'm going to keep it here let me also add uh, let me also add some kind of a, uh, a, a border to the to the fence so if I select the fence here So the moment I've added a new node, you see that uh, everything got disappeared. Right, so uh, I need to uncheck uh, uncheck this configure one attach. And let's go ahead and add uh, have another mesh here. I think it's yeah this one. Let's add this along the border of the fence. Okay. And I want a rounded shape here, so uh, uh, along the fence separator. Fence separator is uh, along every, uh, yeah, so, th so this is one block of 400 by 400. Along every 400 square, uh, 400 units, there will be another marker called fence separator. 
I looked at here and you can set the size of the grid by going to the dungeon console but for now I'm gonna select another mesh node and select the select this one and add it to the current separator now you have a nice uh, thing basically what I'm doing is I'm just gonna disable this every time there's uh, I'm just adding these round uh, meshes so that we get a nice rounded curve uh, in the ends it is in the end Let's also let's go to the current separator and add one more mesh. First, let me uncheck consume and attach because I'm going to add one more mesh. Uh, add mesh node. And let me add this. To it. So we have a nice uh, little thing. Uh, we also need to cover this portion up. So we'll see look at that later. Let me save this. and build and it's already looking good alright so now let's fix the walls the edge of the walls are not looking good so I have a wall pillar as well uh, just like the fence separator we have a wall separator so that we can cover up the edges of the wall and add the mesh node and I have a pillar here let's go ahead and assign that now you see what happens here on the wall here. I'm gonna break this link. So uh, the moment I add it. So what's happening here is uh, if I unbreak the wall, I'm just adding in every wall separate. I'm adding a pillar so that wherever it ends, it would have a smooth transition. So let me add the walls and. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at how to create a theme from uh, from the uh, starter content pack that comes along with the Unreal Engine editor, uh, and we'll also look at uh, some of the more advanced features like material override and uh, the new editor mode, uh, and so on.